being here. Actually, I wasn't too sure how many of you would want to listen to me, you know. So what I did was I told my office, I don't want to address an empty auditorium, you know. So I told a lot of them to be there. Where are they? So I said, I'll fill it up with my people. So at least I feel that there are people who are here to listen to me. Okay, uh, jokes apart, uh, a big, big, big thank you to BMPA and to the task force, which is headed by uh, Vishy, for allowing me this opportunity, to GIPT for taking the initiative and inviting us, and to all my friends in the BMPA and printing fraternity for taking time out and coming to listen to me. Ah. We'll get on with the uh, topic of the day. Topic of the day is very simple. I got into printing by accident. I think I'll move that side because, yeah. Okay. Ah, feels nice. <laughs> That's echoing is there. Can we take care of that? It's okay? Yeah, okay. Everybody is able to hear? Clear? No? Okay. I got into printing by accident. Uh, like somebody told that I started with, you know, into business by accident. My family forced me in, we got into business, and as we kept going and learning about what business is, we found an opportunity which brought us into the printing world. The thing that struck out most to me was most printing companies were focused on the technology that they employ. They were focused on you know, what machines to buy, what is the process, the quality of color. Very few were focused on the market. Very few were focused on the customer. Very few were focused on what is the customer asking for, okay? These were the things which stood out to me because I was not a printing guy. I am a salesman. And that's where I developed an approach for my company, which has yielded me results and which has brought my company to where it stands today. What I'm about to share with you is not given in any marketing book or any sales book. This is my years of learning. I started as a salesman. What I have learned from my colleagues, from my peers, from my bosses, what I learned today is what I have gotten together and I keep doing that with my team in MOS. Some of it has got me fantastic results. Some of it may not have worked. But I thought I would share it with all of you and if it helps you along, then I think the objective of sharing with you would be achieved. Selling for a print company. Before we get into that, I'll just get you a little bit of background. Uh, I need to move my slide. This is all, Shiv, help me. <laughs> See, technology fails me always. Okay, how do I move it with this? Okay, thanks. Okay, a little bit of background. I'm not going to bore you with where the printing industry stands and what is the growth and how much of an opportunity is there. There are two very critical numbers that I'd like you to focus on. One is the number of printers that are there, 250,000, okay, is what is estimated. I'm not saying it. I have given you the source, so if you have any questions on that, ask them, don't ask me. But this is what I have gathered. The other number that I want you to, want you to think about is 75% is owner-driven. These are two very critical numbers. Why are these numbers critical? Because that's your competition in the market. There are so many people who are out there selling similar products or services that you have to offer to the client. That's bound to create competition, which could be healthy, but it also creates an environment where there could be spare capacities, where, could, where there could be unhealthy competition. And the second number, which is 75% owner-driven, is that makes the print company owners who are sitting here or the marketing heads of print companies who are sitting here, you are the chief strategist of your company. You drive the sales efforts that your people make. You give the direction to your people. You tell them where to go and how to sell. This is what is most critical. So if, if the owner is not focused on the market, if the owner is not focused on what the customer wants, if the owner is more focused on what the technology is, if the owner is focused on what the machine can do, then there is a huge marketplace out there which is being ignored. That's one of the things that has surprised me most. 
because you must always and always without fail listen to what your customer wants which direction is your customer headed because if you know where your customer is headed you can make your strategies your plans accordingly if you know what your customer wants you can suit your products and services to need to the requirement that your customer has that's why this number is very important because we are in an industry which is driven major, majorly by all the owners so what what is the industry that we are in it's highly fragmented if you look at it i I've, i've just given you a small little idea about it there, there there are so many more people who know much more about the printing business than i would know so i leave it to them but these are some labels that i have created okay you can add to that like like somebody like a screen printer okay or somebody who is a commercial offset printer somebody specializes as a label printer somebody is a digital and vdp printer somebody is specializing in security somebody is doing all of it okay so you have printers who are broadly classified by the outside world as printers but within the printing community we have specializations we do something which the other does not do does this stand out when you go out into the market does your customer know what your specialization is does your customer know what your core strength is this is a very very important question that all print company owners marketing officers marketing heads national sales head whoever is the decision maker must ask yourself where do you fit in because first you must know who you are where you are then only will you be able to address the market as to who your market is okay there is there is there is a lot of confusion among printers suddenly you see everybody rushing towards digital suddenly you see somebody talking about getting into packaging suddenly you see about you know talks about people getting into label printing why does this happen this happens because we have not identified for ourselves what our core capability is and what our strength is each company must do a swot analysis for itself this is very generalized this is just to give you an idea about what a company must do as a basic before you start making a sales strategy okay this is very very basic one man's strength could be another man's weakness one man's opportunity could be another man's threat a threat for somebody else could be an opportunity so i'm not going to repeat too much of this i'm 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 just giving you people this as pointers the idea is that each one of you must create a swot analysis for your own organization what are your strengths what are your core competencies what are your capabilities what is your brand in the market does the customer that you service recognize you as an expert in that particular field it's very very necessary to identify these strengths and play on these strengths because this is what is ultimately going to get you your business okay similarly you must know your weaknesses now weaknesses are not related only to the organization that you are heading or owning it is also related to the industry that you are serving to the market segment that you are serving this is very important so you know you could be you could be somebody who is trying to service say the insurance sector or you are trying to service the telecom sector and the technology that you are employing is completely outdated that's where the disconnect happens you know so it's very necessary that you have your strengths your weaknesses the opportunities that are coming your way you need to recognize an opportunity there was a very 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 famous story i don't know how many how many people know about this okay but just to just to give you an example somebody told me this and it made a lot of sense to me एक 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 गणेश भक्त था गणेश में उसकी बहुत मान्यता थी गांव में रहता था गांव में बाढ़ आ गई बाढ़ आ गई पानी चढ़ने लगा पानी इतना चढ़ गया कि यू नो ही हैड टू टेक शेल्टर ऑन द टॉप ऑफ हिज टेरेस ओके वो टेरेस पे पहुंच गया पानी और बढ़ते रहा पीपल वर ड्राउनिंग सो ही स्टार्ट प्रेइंग टू हिज फेवरेट गॉड के गणेशा मैंने पूरी जिंदगी आपकी सेवा की है मुझे बचा लो उतने में ही सॉ दैट फ्रॉम नियर हिज टेरेस 
some people were hanging on to a log of wood. एक भारी सा लकड़ी का वो था और उसपे उसको पकड़ के वो लोग they were just flowing away and one of them shouted के come hang on to this we will go to safety and he said नहीं मैं नहीं आऊँगा ये मुझे गणेश बचाएंगे तुम जाओ पानी और चढ़ते गया उसके नाक तक आ गया suddenly he saw one boat coming in people sitting overcrowded it looked like as if ये कभी भी डूब जाएगी Somebody said, "Aajao, tumko bacha lete." He says, "Nahi, isme main aunga to tumme definitely mar jaunga." So he said no to that also. Naak ke upar pani chhod gaya. He was drowning, and his last thought was with his God, communicating, "Hey, Bhagwan, maine tumhari itni seva ki, aur tumne nahi bachaya mujhe." To fir kya hua? Utne mein Ganesh aaye aur bolle ki ye jo maine pehle lakda beja, wo maine tere liye beja tha. Wo baad mein nauka beji. वो तेरे लिए भेजी थी इट्स जस्ट दैट वी डोंट रिकग्नाइज द अपॉर्चुनिटीज दैट कम इन फ्रंट ऑफ अस इट्स वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू रिकग्नाइज अपॉर्चुनिटीज दैट आर कमिंग दैट्स वाई अ स्वॉट एनालिसिस ऑफ वॉट आवर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वॉट वी डू इज वेरी क्रिटिकल ओके सो फॉर सो गुड पीपल एनी बडी फीलिंग स्लीपी श्योर स्टूडेंट्स यू फॉलोइंग मी यू आर एबल टू हियर मी Please stop me and ask me a question. Okay, I'll try and answer it straight away. Okay, and when I'm answering it, remind me where I was. Otherwise, I will go off on tangent and ta start telling you story about Amitabh Bachchan. Okay, he's my favorite. Okay, so this is this is what is the importance of SWOT analysis. You must understand your own organization before you go out and try to sell your organization to somebody else. Clear on this? So all of you promise me you will do a SWOT. Yeah? Somebody wants to give it a shot. Just now? Any volunteers? No? They're for their own company. For their own yeah, for their own company. What is their strength? What is their weakness? What do they identify as opportunities? And what do they think will be the threats? If you don't know yourself, how are you going to sell yourself to the customer? That's the main thing. Okay, this is the modern day. When I was a salesman, when I joined Procter and Gamble, I joined a joined a company which was far ahead of its time. They said, "These are the towns that you cover." I was posted in Indore in Western MP. These are the towns you cover. This is your route map. This is what you do. And I started doing it. It was a tough business. When I shifted to Xerox. The whole ball game changed from from a city like Indore. I came to Mumbai. Okay, though I have been educated in Mumbai, I was working now in Mumbai, and there was no information. Those were the days when there were no cell phones, internet was not heard of. So we as salespeople were asked to make cold calls. What are cold calls? Cold calls are you go door to door. I was given Fort Fountain as my territory. I remember walking every day from my office in Nariman Point to Fort Fountain, making cold calls. Go to the door. If the receptionist is kind enough, she will talk to you politely. Otherwise, she'll kick you out. Hi, ma'am. I am coming from Modi Xerox. It was called Modi Xerox at that point of time. I am coming from Modi Xerox Limited. We sell photocopying machines. I would like to meet your purchase manager. She would look at you and say, "Sorry, we don't have time. Go." Or she would say, "You don't read that notice. No salesmen are allowed." You know. So that's how our selling was happening in those days. Times have changed. Today's times are very different. Today, the the internet has brought information right to your doorstep. You have 90% of the information that you need on your target or potential customer already available to you on internet. How many of us use it to sell? I don't know, but it's it's one of the most powerful tool. Before we get to the internet and what the internet can do for us. or how it helps in selling it's very very important to understand how we are going to target the market the market is also now expanded like crazy there are different different kinds of companies there are different different sectors each sector looking more lucrative and more potential than the other so you need to understand where do you want to position yourself and that's why the swot that's why i said you must know A, okay. With what kind of a printer are you? 
Second, okay, you must know your strengths and weaknesses. And based on that, those strengths and weaknesses, you target the market segment that you want to attack. This is, this is the core to anything. So again, I repeat, three, three, three very critical points. 75% of print companies are driven by their owners. So they are the chief strategists. Second, okay, you're talking about your own strengths and weaknesses. And third, you know, which is the vertical that you want to attack? Again, I'm, I, just for sake of illustration, I am giving you certain verticals. This is not the full list or this is not the final list. It's just to make a point as to what kind of verticals you could be addressing. You could be a pharma printer, okay? You could be, you could be a packaging guy, okay? You could be a VDP guy, you could be a commercial guy, you could be anything, you could be a label printer. But you need to understand what kind of verticals are there in the marketplace. This is what we call as segmented selling. We understand what segments are best suited to our core competency and our strengths. We must not, you see, as, 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 as a sales company, as a marketing company, you, you can't now in today's time afford to be doing a hit and run. Okay, I'm talking about this, I'm talking about this, I'm talking No, it has to be research based. It has to be a very, very studied and a very, very uh, well-informed approach that you do to the customer to understand, to be successful in such a highly competitive market. Okay, so these are, an, these are some examples. FMCGs, mutual funds, publications, insurance. Feel free to add. Feel free to add. Anybody can add something here? I'm just trying to wake you guys up. Somebody? Any, any, any important uh, vertical which is missed? Yes. Uh, when you say verticals, yeah. do you, do you, should you have uh, vertical specific uh, sales staff? Or when you are talking about an India presence, can an area specific? Uh, I, will, I, will, I, I would love to answer you right now, but then it would take away from the subsequent slides. So I'll come to your answer. As I, as I roll along, you will get your answers. OK? <laughs> Sorry? Airlines. airlines, absolutely. Airlines, airlines, airlines. Very, very valid example. Now, all of you who've been in printing, okay, I'm sure they were printers. I wouldn't know, my, my dear Ramu. And Ramu, thank you so much for coming here, okay? Uh, uh, I don't know how many printing companies used to survive by printing airline tickets. I don't know, okay? But they went out of business? Yeah? So, but within the airline, there is still a lot of scope for other kinds of work, okay? Today, the airline may not be issuing tickets, but the airline has replaced the ticket with a loyalty program, okay? A loyalty program that an airline runs is a printer's dream. It's huge business. Get a hold of a jet airline, so get a hold of a foreign airline, and I assure you, your billing will be in the vicinity of three to five crores per annum. But do you have the capability to provide that service? Because what all is required to do an airline loyalty program booklet and the whole welcome kit printing? So that's why you need to know your SWOT. You need to know which verticals are a best fit for you. Okay. So once you have done your SWOT and you have identified the verticals, tourism. What, tourism, big tourism, education, wonderful. Okay, people are waking up. Good. <laughs> So we have so many such sectors. So make verticals or segments which suit your strengths the best. OK? What is it that you do once you have identified the verticals? This is, this is now very general, very specific in the sense to just doing the verticals. We're not talking about as yet the approach that the company needs to do. We are only identifying verticals. So all of what you see here, OK, is that you are identifying the vertical. So you need to understand what that vertical is by doing a research on it. Map the size of the vertical, OK? Try and have a general idea about who your competitor there is going to be. Who are the people who are operating in these verticals? This itself will give you a lot of ideas, a lot of inputs, OK? Because the moment you are able to identify who are the players in this particular segment, Okay, 
what are their competitions, etc. You will know. Like today, if you are taking something like the insurance sector, okay, once you take an insurance sector, you must identify who is the top leader, who is the number one brand. Okay, you could have an LIC, which is a public sector company. Okay, who's next? Maybe it's ICICI IC, uh, Life Insurance. Okay, it could be anybody. Understand what the size of these companies are. Okay, understand where they are positioned. This is this is for you to get a sense of the vertical that you are approaching. It's very very important that you do this. What are the needs that the vertical has from a printing company? And what are the needs that that company, the insurance company, satisfies of its own customers by employing the printing company? Are you, are you able to understand what I just said? Anybody need more clarity? What I mean to say here is that the insurance company hires a printer to do something which helps them to satisfy their own customer. Okay, so please understand what is it that the insurance company is satisfying of their own customer by using a printing company. This is very important because it will give you ideas of what else can you offer to your customer. Okay, you need to understand their fears. What is it that they are worried about? Typically, if a telecom company is going to a printer, it's worried about its data. What happens if my data leaks out? If a bank is going to a printing company, the bank is worried. The moment you know these kind of things, you will also start looking for solutions. That, okay, if my customer is worried that the data is going to leak out, what can I do to assure the customer that data is safe? You understand? Are we, are we able to link up to what we're doing? Okay, wonderful. So these are some examples of what you do to understand the vertical and to map the vertical. Okay. Why do we need this approach? Why is it that we can't continue selling the way we were selling earlier? Like in my times, it was very simple. Go door to door. My boss used to say, Mehul, a good salesman makes seven cold calls a day. So somehow I would make seven cold calls. Two would be genuine calls, five would be fake. I would just stand under the building and write down the names. And I knew how to fill it up, okay? So <laughs> that's how it used to happen. But a good salesman always ensures that he keeps making enough number of cold calls in those days, in the olden days, so that he builds up a good prospect bank. It's all numbers. If you, if you have to get four orders in a month, okay, very simply put, you must have 40 prospects. Out of those 40 prospects, you must have at least 10 hot prospects who are willing to buy within 30 days. And out of those 10 prospects, maybe four will click. And that's how you will achieve your target. It was as simple as that. But times have changed. Times are no longer like that. What we today have is a scenario which is in which there is too much competition. I have been attending sessions which are conducted by BMPA, by the AIFMP. I have been going everywhere, different verticals, different industries. And the one thing that I always hear from my fraternity is that offset printing is going out of business. Okay, this is the most common refrain that I have heard from all my friends. Okay, the next thing that I hear is, okay, what is the next thing that I want to move into? And it really surprises me and amazes me. Initially, about five years back, everybody wanted to go digital. I a digital machine, it doesn't happen. So many people have bought digital machines, burnt their fingers, and given it back. Okay? Why did that happen? Because they never understood what a digital mach machine does. They never understood the segment. They never understood what the customer's requirements were. They never understood. They never went deep into it. It was a me to you attitude. Okay? Freddy ne liya hai, to main leta hon, because Freddy knows everything about printing business. Right, Freddy? So if Freddie buys it and Freddie is investing in an Indigo, then that is the thing to do. If I have money, I will do it. Okay? So the meet you attitude even today continues. People are now suddenly finding the new mantra, which is packaging. How many packaging guys here? Please raise hands. Okay? Right, wonderful. Okay, so you, you, you have a lot of the commercial guys coming into your space. Any thoughts on that? Stay away. <laughs> <laughs> it was when the is much higher compared to commercial. We are never worried about investment. 
<laughs> but the, 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 the problem or the idea here is that don't have this. The market is as it is, you know, full of competitors. I take you back to the earlier number, 250,000 of us floating around in the country. I don't know how many of us have shut shop, okay, started some other business, but 250,000 on the minimum. 